Hi, this is Miss Ng. And when Miss Jan does a kid activist program, as you know, uh, if you've watched them before, I film them. And, and I often go very, I'm always very unscripted, and I share my thoughts and opinions. And after I was looking over Miss Jan's, uh, th this particular one about Harvey Milk, I realized that I spoke a lot about my personal faith. I'm a Christian, and um, but but I I don't want anybody to feel like offended or ostracized if you are not a Christian. Uh, so I just really wanted to put a disclaimer in the front of this one and apologize uh, up front if I offended anybody or anything because uh, because I certainly don't feel that way, um, uh, and my opinions don't reflect the thought of the those of the library, but. Please know that the library, too, loves people of all faiths or no faith or whatever, because people are people. And I do think, as I did mention, when I kind of stuck my foot into it, talking about my faith too much maybe here, um, love is something about which we all can agree. And so basically that's it, just love, love, and keep loving. But I did want to kind of put a little caveat at the beginning of this one, because I do get, I do talk about church and stuff like that. So um, if you're a super special grown up, you might want to watch it first. Um, as with all of these, because because uh, these kid activist ones are people who have dealt with some horrible, horrible uh, prejudices and hatred. Um, you know, we started right off with Martin Luther King Jr. and and Frederick Douglass and 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 Susan B. Anthony and Harvey Milk. Now, you know, so we're not talking about people um, who are facing uh, anything but. Uh, who have faced anything but uh, tragic, horrible situations um, and came out to be advocates for change. So um, just especially because this one does talk about my faith a lot. Not a lot, but you'll, you'll see. I just blab on. But we did want to put that caveat out there um, just so you know. So without any further babbling from me, uh, Miss Jan with uh, Kid Activists featuring Harvey Milk. Thank you. Ba, 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 kid activist with Miss Jan. Miss Jan, how's it going? Very well. Good, good, good. Yeah, the this sun is such has been a great shining. Series of Dude, books. I know it's such a great series, yeah. and it's crazy. Like, it's crazy that that all these different people are in that book right there. Yeah, you know what and I mean. And you know what? There are other books with other people. Dude, in yeah, there yeah. are other books with other people, and yeah. there's all these ones. And today we were talking about a dude. I didn't really know too much about him until a movie came out about him. With who was in that? We movie? have Sean Penn. I think. Yeah, Sean Penn. It's downstairs in the. Oh, library. cool! So we if, have if, if grown ups want to watch it, because it's definitely a grown up movie. Right. It's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I was yeah. going to bring it up, but then I thought that's a downstairs. Yeah, that downstairs. one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but it's and it's just called Milk. Milk. Right? Okay. That's it. Cool. Yeah. Cool. cool. Milk. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and that's when I first learned about this guy that we're talking about today, Harvey Milk. Oh, what a wonderful man! He Dude, was. his picture yeah. looks really nice. This Let's find out about him. All right, there he is Harvey Milk coming out for equality. Harvey Milk was a gay rights activist and one of the first openly gay politicians to be elected to office in the United States. He won a seat on the San Francisco Board of Supervisors in 1977, but he was assassinated only a year later. Assassinated means somebody killed him. And we think about, you know, the first person that we did, Martin Luther King Jr. Right. Same thing. Like right. sometimes when you step out and and stand up for what's right and true and for love, there That's are right. people who are afraid of that and right. fight against it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. That's a good way of putting it. He grew up in an era when gay people had no rights at all, and his fight for equality made him a hero to many in the LGBTQ plus community. Harvey was born in 1930 between the two world wars. His father, Bill, was in the Navy during World War I, and his mother, Minerva, signed up for the Women's Naval Reserves. After the war, they both settled in New York, where they married and had two sons, Harvey and his older brother, Bob. 
so this must be Harvey because he's smaller. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when he was eight and nine years old, Harvey would spend his small weekly allowance on tickets to movie matinees on Saturday afternoons. Now, I have to tell you, I grew up with movie matinees. Too, yeah. It was fantastic. Dude, my it was dad just did full too. of kids. Yeah, and yeah. We got to sit up in the balcony and we got popcorn and drinks and it was just what wonderful. What theater did you go to? In Swickley? Swickley. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. All right, so he and Bob would go to watch The Lone Ranger, Hop Along Cassidy, or The Three Stooges, but it wasn't the movies that Harvey looked forward to all week. Before the film began, the theater manager held a raffle, and whoever had the winning ticket went up on stage to collect their prize. It could have been a Buck Rogers toy pistol, perhaps, or Hopalong Cassidy wristwatch, but for Harvey, the real prize was the chance to go, run on stage and bow to the audience. He loved being in the limelight. Uh. Harvey's family was Jewish, and his grandfather, Morris, had helped found the Sons of Israel Synagogue. Harvey's dad and his uncles all worked for Morris and were members of that synagogue. Harvey loved his grandfather and wanted to please him, so he never spoke critically of religion. Later in life, though, he said that by age 12, he had decided that religion was hypocritical. Secretly, he started to reject his family's religious beliefs, but he was always proud to be Jewish. Harvey's mother was committed to the concept of tikkun olam, a, excuse me, a Hebrew phrase meaning a sense of responsibility to repair what is wrong in the world. Whoa, Isn't that's that cool. I never heard of that before. I haven't. This this yeah. book has just As opened my cool. eyes to so yeah. many things. Her ideas about social justice had a significant influence on Harvey. He was a stubborn boy, and all kinds of injustices made him angry. When he was young, that anger was usually directed at his father, who never seemed to approve of him. As he grew older and became more aware of larger injustices, he shared his mother's commitment to taking action to heal the world. When Harvey was 11, he discovered something that brought him much joy. Opera. Dude, and you know what opera is? I absolutely love opera. Yeah. Uh, I didn't discover it until much later. Can you describe her? Opera is sort of, if you think about American musicals, mm -hmm. like if you think about uh, the sound of music and things like that, think about them on a stage, and there's also a video of them too, but opera was the precursor, the beginning thing of that. Right. It started like in other different countries, and they tell a story, and Mozart wrote some operas, and Puccini, and just incredible music, incredible stories. And isn't it all sung? It's all sung. Yes. The whole thing is sung. Yeah. The whole thing is sung. Like, um, okay, so yeah, it's whole, so it'd be more like, it'd be more like Sweeney Todd, because Sweeney Todd is an American opera. Okay, and and everything up, is sung. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this, this is definitely not a show for preschoolers. You know what I mean? This, this is definitely our older, our older. So if you're a preschool, if you're in, you know, the early grades, don't be looking up Sweeney Todd. Yeah, without a super special grown up. Right, right, right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. The performances of the Metropolitan Opera were broadcast on the radio. So Harvey began to spend Saturday afternoons in an armchair in his living room listening to those operas. And it still they is were, today. It is. Yeah. The operas were sung in French, German, or Italian. So he didn't understand the words, but he loved the emotion and the drama. Sometimes he pretended that he was wearing a tuxedo and conducting the orchestra. When he was 14, his mom started giving him money to take the train to New York City to see live performances. In high school, Harvey was known by the nickname Glimpy Milch. The name Glimpy came from Glimpy McCluster, a character in the East Side Kids movies of the 1940s. Milch was the last name of his grandfather, who had immigrated to the United States from Lithuania. Milk was the English translation, translation of milk. Ah. And I, that's how they say it in Germany. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
cool. In his teens, Harvey was realizing that he was attracted to other boys. But this was long before the gay rights movement began in America. In fact, this was long before the word gay was even co in common use. In the 1940s, same-sex relationships were a crime. <laughs> gay men were referred to as homosexuals, and Harvey knew what people thought about homosexuals. Even his own mother had warned him to stay away from them. Suggesting that someone might be a homosexual was one of the worst things you could say about them. Harvey knew that this part of himself was something he had to keep secret. So he worked hard to fit in. He had a sense of humor and made everyone laugh. He dated girls. He was on the football team and joined track, wrestling, and basketball. Harvey hung out with the other jocks, but he didn't have any close friends, maybe because he was having to hide something important about himself. Decades later, one of high school classmates recalled, sorry, not sorry. a little awkwardly yeah. put. Yeah. One of high school classmates. Oh, recalled, one of his, oh, there's a missing word. Yeah, there's a missing yeah, word. Yeah. Didn't we have a missing word? We, we had in the, extra words in the other one. Yeah. They must have, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, when we were, when young. We were yeah. young people, we didn't know there was such a thing as gayness. If Harvey knew this, he had to face it all by himself. Harvey wasn't a straight-A student, but he was hard-working. He wanted to get out of his hometown and start college early, so he pushed through high school faster than most students. After he graduated, no one heard from him again. It was like he dropped off the face of the earth, one of his friends said. As an adult, Harvey rarely talked about his childhood. One of the few stories he did share was how, in his early teens, his parents talked to him about what happened in Warsaw, Poland during World War II. The Jewish people there were surrounded by Nazi troops, but they fought bravely. They didn't fight because they thought they could win. They were massively outnumbered. They fought his parents told him, because evil should always be fought, even yeah. when there is no hope left. Isn't that true? Yeah. This message stayed with Harvey, and after he became an activist, he often spoke about the importance of taking a stand against evil. By the time Harvey graduated from high school, the Second World War had ended, and the world had learned about the Holocaust. For Jewish people in America, the news was devastating. Millions of Jewish people had been murdered. Many gay men were also rounded up and killed. As Jewish people were forced to wear yellow stars, gay men were forced to wear pink triangles. As a Jewish man and a gay man, Harvey saw himself as an outsider, as someone who had to fight to be accepted. When people said terrible things about gay people or tried to pass laws discriminating against them, he knew how dangerous this was. As a politician, he often pointed out that similar things had been said and done to the Jewish people in Germany. I cannot remain silent anymore, he said in one speech. There was silence in Germany because no one got up early enough to say what Hitler really was. If only someone did, maybe the Holocaust would never have happened. Harvey didn't become involved in gay rights activism until much later in life, but as he got older, he began to feel that the act of coming out as gay was very important. I would like to see every gay doctor come out, every gay lawyer, every gay architect to come out, stand up, and let the world know, Harvey said. That would do more to end prejudice overnight than anybody would imagine. I urge them to do that, urge them to come out. Only that way will we start to achieve our rights. Harvey felt that as long as straight people thought they didn't know any gay people, they could believe all kinds of terrible things about them. But if gay people came out, then everyone would realize that there were gay people in their lives, in their workplaces, among their friends, even among their own families they would realize that their negative beliefs, stereotypes, and misconceptions were untrue. Harvey didn't focus only on gay rights. When he ran for office, he promised to champion free public transportation, create low-income housing, 
and support daycare centers for working mothers. Mm -hmm. After he was elected, he succeeded in getting a bill passed that banned discrimination based on sexual orientation, a groundbreaking accomplishment in the late 1970s. He also helped defeat proposed state legislation that would have banned gay teachers, as well as anyone who supported gay rights, from working in a California public school. In Harvey Milk's lifetime, the LGBTQ plus rights movement was still in its early days. Homophobia was widespread and often led to violence. Harvey knew that by being an activist and by being proud, openly gay man, he was taking a risk. He even predicted that he might be killed because of it. Yet he chose to take that risk because he believed in the importance of the work he was doing. Harvey Milk was only 48 years old when he and Major Mayor George Moscone were shot by Dan White, a city supervisor. His death was tragic, but his legacy lives on. Today, there are more than 500 openly LGBTQ elected officials in the United States. And though there is still much work to be done, the LGBTQ plus community has made great strides since his death. In North America, as well as in many countries around the world, LGBTQ plus people are more visible, more accepted, and have more legal rights and protections than at any other time in history. Today, Harvey Milk is one of the best known figures in the United States gay history, but many earlier activists helped pave the way before him. Phyllis Lyon and Del Martin were two of them. In 1955, they founded the first organization for lesbians. At that time, it was difficult and dangerous to be openly gay or lesbian. You could lose your job or your housing, and you could even be arrested. The two women named their organization Daughters of Belitis, after a fictional lesbian character from a French poem. That way, if anyone asked the women, could say that it was just a poetry club. A few years earlier, a group of gay men had started an organization called the Mattachini Society. These two groups helped lay the groundwork for the LGBTQ plus movement. That's okay, awesome. I also want to share with you this book. Yeah. Who oh, was yeah. Harvey Milk? Who was? Who was? Maybe he'll come on the show sometime. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Who was Harvey Milk? Yeah. So you have a lot of good books. I do. Here. Yeah. yeah. So there are a lot of books about the struggle. Right. Um, right. For rights. And uh, parents who. Yeah, this is a tale of two daddies. Some people have one daddy, some people have two, some people don't have any daddies. Right. Like all different right. kinds of families. Yeah. yeah. And a tale of two mommies. Yeah. Um, these books have characters in them whose parents are gay. Yeah. Um, this is two gay men and their adopted daughter. Yeah. Um, we even have board books. Board books, yeah. Yeah. Daddy, Papa, and me. Cool, cool. Mommy, Mama, and me. Yeah. I I like this one too. Different dragon. It's it's kind of about like how it's okay way to be to different. Explain it. Yeah, yeah, explain it. right. Yeah, and then this is an awesome resource book. Um, Harvey Milk's in there. Harvey Milk's yeah, there. very yeah. cool. Yeah. You know, I one of my favorite books when people come in and ask for books on this topic. You want to hold this one? I would love to. This is this is a true story about a church in California, and this is one of my favorite books because, like, for me, I I Harvey Milk was not into religion. Um, I am I'm I'm a faithful Christian. That that's my path. You know, I'm a minister, and for a long time, many churches said that it was not only wrong or illegal to be gay, but also said that it was sinful. Right. And there's still a lot of work to do. There's still some some people that believe that and some churches that still believe that. But there are many churches 
who uh, and and synagogues and and other and other forms of worship that do and this is this one here the church that i happen to go to in east liberty is also a church for all where gay people go there straight people go there um white people go there black people go there i think and again this is just this is just me because i i am you know i'm a christian um so i'm using christian type words but i think that a church like that is a lot what heaven's going to look like because it's yeah, all people, you know. And I don't mean to push, you know, my my belief in Christianity off on people, but but this is a great book if that happens to be something that you're interested in, or um, it's it's about um, one of those churches where, and you can find those churches right here here in Pittsburgh and even in the North Hills. And so, it's a beautiful oh, book. Oh, such you know, a beautiful just, book. I yeah. love it. So great. So great. Yeah. A nice, uh, short and sweet text. Yes, so you yes. Can read it with the younger. Person. We have come a long way in the areas of racism, in the areas of women's rights, and the areas of. I never can get the LBGTQ the whole like strings of letters together correctly so usually I just say BLT um, you know the LBGTQ plus community right. And, right. And, and we need to keep doing that until you know what, what, did, what did the mother say about working for what's always to fight evil what was that one thing she said back at the beginning because I thought that was beautiful I think it was where was it as you can see, we're very official here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bobby's mother was committed to the concept of Tikkun Olam, a, a sense of responsibility to repair what is wrong in the world. Yes, to repair what is wrong in the world. And the only way that we can repair what's wrong in the world is through love. And, and that book is filled with people. Uh, my gosh, remember when we did Frederick Douglass? Oh my gosh. All dude, of these stories dude. are just amazing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I like that this is a, a Jewish family. Yeah. Because um, they were persecuted. Oh, that. yeah. I mean, totally. And still today, some of this right. still Some people goes still have mean things to say. About and, mean things to say. Right. And so the irony is, I think, if you consider yourself a Christian and then you're saying these words about other people it is Christ it is, is not gonna like that it is a little bit bizarre it's a it little is. bit bizarre because we are all made in the in in god's image you know whether you and again i'm so sorry you know i'm coming at this perhaps you're watching this and you're not somebody who who uh subscribes to a faith uh, at all and and i completely respect that too because that's really important too you know everybody has a different path but um the love i think we all can agree i do too i think that that's love universal. is it's good is, for us yeah you know, it makes yeah. us healthier makes us happier yeah. when you're done if loving focus on love the good more. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and love people and yeah. the, the, there's mm -hmm. this priest that I really like, Father Richard Rohr, and he has a Center for Contemplation and Action, and their motto is, the best criticism of the bad is the practice of the better. Oh. And I love that, Father yeah. Richard Rohr. Way cool. So let's just keep on trying to do the better. And we're going to fail! Okay. We're going to mess up! Yep. You know what I mean? Because we're human! We're human. Yes! To be gracious yeah. to one another and be gracious to ourselves. Who's next, Miss Jan? All right. Next, we have a woman. I do not Dolores know her. Huerta. Oh my gosh! Yeah. I am very excited about about learning about Dolores Huerta. Yeah. Oh my so, gosh! Yep. I'm so excited. Yay. Okay, we'll see you next time. Thanks, yes. Miss Jan.